is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the North End Podcast, episode 58. My name is Zach Graham, your host here on the North End, joined, as always, by my good buddy. He's on record as my best friend. His name is Ian Michaud, a.k.a. E, a.k.a. Le'e James, a.k.a. Sebastian Drew E.C., a.k.a. Easterdamus, a.k.a. Pap E. O'Daniel, a.k.a. The Fashion Easter, a.k.a. Chili, Willie, a.k.a. Eon, Stockel. Uh, E, coming live on Thursday afternoon, uh, ready to recap the, uh, the loss, the Open mm-hmm. Cup exit of this 2023 version of Austin FC at the hands of the Chicago Fire last night. Uh, of course, previewing the, the Copa Tejas match on Saturday. We've got uh, Copa Tejas in Next Pro as well, taking on Dynamo Dose for the second time this season. But first, I will ask you, uh, after uh, another long night, disappointing this time, leaving Q2, how are you feeling today? I'm all right. You know, it was a tough loss, a uh, deserved loss. Um, I, I had a great time. Energy was yeah. great in the, yeah. sta- in, the, in the stadium and um, got to sit in on the, the inaugural – Verde Council, the round table, <laughs> the round table, the great meeting of the minds. I don't yeah. know if uh, we should get into that right now or after we go through the the match here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was great, man. We it was yeah. like the uh, philosophers of yesteryear <laughs> gathering at the 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 community area in Rome, Seneca, exchanging ideas, Nero, Cato, the younger. <laughs> They were all there. So, uh, yeah, pontificating. Yeah. Um, it was great. Uh, what, what was it? I mean, that was great. Yeah. Game was rough. Um, obviously, you know, when we win, I drink a little more. And when we lose, I, I drink a little more after drinking. So <laughs> I, I drank a little more after the game. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I'm not a young young man anymore, I suppose. The bounce back is a little rough. So feeling it a little bit today. Got my monster. Got my chemicals here. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, I, on the other hand, had a nice little uh, organic gala apple. Uh, did have a little, uh, uh, what do they call the um, liquid IVs? Those are delicious, yep. man. Yeah, After they're good. Those, so uh, ready to go. But uh, the emotional hangover is getting me more today. Um and, you know, it's not just because of the disappointment on the pitch last night and the result, but the ensuing, you know, backlash, or I think maybe whiplash is better a better way to put it. Yeah. The way we as a fan base bounce back and forth between, you know, maybe, maybe being a little overly positive when we string some good results together, but then just, like, trying to light the world on fire yeah. after a loss, especially one that doesn't affect the league. Let's just go ahead and get in to this one here um obviously round of 16 open cup match last night at q2 with the fire coming to town uh you know winner was gonna host the uh the quarterfinal match so we both predicted victories we both i think expected victories and i think a a victory and i think uh a lot of fans did as well which Mm -hmm. probably um you know, plays the, an even bigger part on in, in people's disappointment last night and, and the reactions or overreactions. You know, I think kind of just overreaction theater would be a good name for um, the fan reactions, something, yeah. something like that. I don't know. Interested to see uh, those come out later this evening. Um, and I guess speaking of videos coming out, oh, shout out the media team, whichever one or multiple uh, lovely folks who work with the team in that aspect that listens to the pod. We appreciate you. It is always super fucking cool to hear our voices pop up on those hype videos. Um, so I wish, uh, you know, our voices on the hype videos for yesterday's match could have brought us a better result if we wanted to get superstitious with it. Um, but then, the, you know, the next thing you see from the media team is the starting lineup. Um, and I think just about what we expected here, um, Stuver and Net, you know, a, a strong, we're going after this type of lineup. Um, Julio with the armband, Leo back there with him, uh, Ring also back there with him, Johnny G and Adam Lundqvist 
uh, playing those wing back positions. You see Danny and Johan in that defensive midfield, Redis and Ragoni in the two attacking attacking midfield slots, and, and Zardis up top with a bench of Jeffel, Diego, Finley, Lima, Rado, Maxi, and of course Bersano backing up Brad. Um, any reactions to that lineup? I, I personally didn't have many. I was like, okay, like this is kind of what we expected, going after it. Um, you know, I think both of us thought potentially Maxi could have started again up top end up getting Jossie for 90. So I think once we get to the Houston part, like it's, it's Maxie's day on Saturday again, I, I think. Um, but how do you feel about the lineup going into the match? I mean, it's hard not to feel good about that lineup. You know, it's uh, probably, you know, outside of maybe a few minor substitutions here or there, Finley, Rodney, whatever, Maxie's artists, whatever you prefer, probably the best 11 we can throw out there at the, at the current time. Um, so that's kind of what made this such a dick kick is that like, we really went for it, you know, yeah. and with this congested schedule with us being dinged up to put all those guys out there, um, you know, we wanted to win that game and, uh, yeah, it just makes it even worse that it took the L and now we got to bounce back for this game on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Well, I think uh, to be fair, the other side, Chicago rolled out pretty much their first choice starting yeah. 11 led by Sheridan Shakiri, who um <laughs> had his best game of the season of course <laughs> against <laughs> us um absolutely pretty much pretty much everybody starting for them that that you would expect outside of in in net you saw I think Spencer Ritchie was his name back up to to Chris Brady there who's been very good for them um so that was a, a little bit of a head scratcher I, I guess just getting Brady a, a little rest or giving Ritchie a look I didn't honestly think he was that great, but uh, we can we can get into that here. Um, I mean, right off the top, uh, second minute, Danny turns on the Jets in the midfield, kind of dusts a few Chicago defenders, and then gets kind of ran through right on the outside of the area. So winning a free kick to that left side or that left goal post, um, that ensuing free kick was taken by Ragoni. And uh, hits the side netting again like he did on, on Saturday against Toronto and completely fooled the entire East stands. Everybody yeah. like sustained 20 to 30 seconds celebrating a goal. Uh, and yeah, but again, it's good to see Emmy continuing to be dangerous from, from that distance, especially while Diego and, and Drews are out. I, that's been like the largest area where we've missed Diego. For sure. Yeah. The, and pieces. Well, well, we can talk about Diego because I thought there was there was some things that I saw from him that were still concerning. Um, and then there were some things that he did that was like, yeah, that's this is what we need. And, and a lot of that was was corners and set pieces in the second half. Um, eighth minute. I get I mean, this is going to be a theme throughout. So we can just go ahead and break the ice on the officiating conversation. Um, the crew as a whole was bad and that may be putting it nicely it also uh, just get out in front of this now and maybe you don't think the same but i it did not affect the outcome they were bad for both sides but right here where shakiri two hand shoves danny yeah and no call it shakiri's on the ball so it's not like the head official is not looking at him um and then five seconds later soft foul on, on julio uh immediately after that like kamara flops on a on a a, a jump ball there um yeah any thoughts on the officiating crew because whether it was the 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 line judge or the head official or like they were not in sync and i didn't think alex chilowitz did a great job um calling the game straight up bad yeah no they were they were bad and uh, like look uh missed calls poor calls throughout the course of an entire game is normal it yeah. happens yeah. but they were so not ready. Yeah. Disjointed. Yes. They were, they did not communicate well. They were not in sync. They were not ready for the game. And um, I mean, the players just deserve on both sides, like you said, because I'm there. <laughs> this is not the reason why we lost. Uh, the players deserved better. And yeah. they were, that was some shit officiating. Yeah. I mean, if it, like, again, for both sides, there was the one chance in the second half for Chicago in the north end where Shakiri was free. I think we'll, we'll talk about it here, but he gets free, takes a shot, 
with Stuver off his line and clearly gets deflected out by Rigoni for a corner and they called a goal kick. It took him 30 seconds to overturn that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just not, uh, not their best outing there for sure. And, and also not, not Austin's best outing either. Um, and I think maybe we put a little bit more scrutiny on the players here than, than some fans might want to, but uh, we'll see. Let's continue here. Um, I guess on that free kick from the Kamara flop or what, what I judged as a flop on the replay, Shakiri takes it, um, puts in a dangerous ball to the back post, which uh, becomes a theme. And yeah. Kai Kamara can't quite get there, but Shakiri, not just in the open field with his passing and um, I thought his, his skill just handling the ball too in, in open space and in tight quarters, he showed like he lived up to his billing mm-hmm. last night. And that was unfortunate for us. Um, yeah, he showed why he's the highest paid player in the league. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Twelfth minute, Austin building up here. Nice find by Leo uh, to Rigoni on the left side, um, kind of near midfield. He plays a nice give and go with Lundqvist there. And so Emmy gets down, uh, you know, into that dangerous area on the left outside of the 18. Fires in a cross that's kind of behind both Rodney and Jossie. And then Gallagher's coming in from that right side wing back spot, trying to crash and, and get onto it. And it was just kind of in between all three of those guys. So mm-hmm. um, not great placement there, but again, uh, those are the types of chances that, that this team has been creating and scoring off of. Um, and, and that's what we want here. So um, Chicago ends up clearing that out. Um, another note I had here in the first half, I thought Danny was playing – higher in the defensive shape in the first half than I can remember in almost any game on the rewatch. He is like pretty frequently right up in the same area as a Rodney or as a Mm -hmm. Rigoni, Um, like almost not quite joining that, that line of defense there, but, but making his presence known. And I thought, I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, little tweak and, and maybe I'm just misremembering other games where Danny has played that high, but that mm-hmm. was something I thought I saw in the first half that was different. It might be the the pairing with Valencia. Sure. Where you know, yeah, I, he's just a little higher up. Yeah. Yeah. But that makes some sense. Seventeenth minute. Uh another good Shakiri ball here to the backside for Kai Kamara, who heads it on frame, but luckily right at Stuver. Um I mean, he's just that guy is timeless 38 years old just physical force still yeah um, i did not feel good in any matchup with him going i mean he was uh, watching him next to julio i'm like geez louise this guy's big yeah they, um, they they looked big yeah when he still got both of their you know uh Cichos, i think is how you pronounce the that center back's name pineda also was was sizable and we know that Tehran also who's out yeah uh, they've, they've got a, a sizable back line too um, yeah. But in Kai, the the pace is what still strikes me. That to me is the huge difference between what I've seen out of a guy like Jossie this season, who's what six and a half years younger. Yeah, uh, the pace is still there with Kai, and yeah. and you know we we know the G has has lost a step or two. Um, twenty fifth minute, bad ball. One of Ragoni's I thought uh, lowest moments on the night. Bad ball across the field mm-hmm. in the defensive half gets intercepted. Um, creates that that kind of fast break for Chicago and, and Kai Kamara gets a tough shot away that ends up being saved by by Brad. But I mean, Kai Kamara doing what we expected him to do, being a threat early and often here. Yep. Um, Activity and, level was super high. Yeah, yeah, and and this really starts a run here. Twenty sixth minute, Shakiri you know, st- still dangerous with his passing. Gets uh, Hale uh, Selassie, I think, or Salisi. Selassie, I think. Hale Selassie. Um, in behind there on that right side. Another one of their young, promising players. Um, Stuver, great save. Parries it out for a corner. Um, but that was definitely the most dangerous chance to that point of the match. Mm-hmm. And then on that ensuing corner, of course, Shakiri taking it. Uh, plays it towards that back post. And then Sichos rises right up over Leo. And puts it towards the back post. And to be honest, man, like on the rewatch, I think this is somewhat on Brad. I, like, I, I think was, he thought it was wide and he reacted slowly. I was very confused by his response to that header. 
I, I, he didn't even make an attempt. Yeah. He just yeah. kind of looked at it and I was like, damn, he, I was like, damn, that ball must have just been one of those balls where as soon as you see it, you're like, well, I can't get to that because yeah, it's yeah. a perfect strike. Um, but yeah, I was confused. I don't know if it was savable, mm-hmm. but it was definitely uh, attempt worthy. Yeah. I think you he know. just I think he just misjudged it. Yeah, I think so too. It head. was it was really weird. It was a weird goal and I was definitely confused by his response and uh you know reaction to that. Well, I I also don't want to just completely discount Leo's role in that and his positioning which he was he got beat on that play as well. So it's not all on on Super <laughs> but um that was definitely just more notable especially from us our view in the north and easier to see that play out on, on the replay. Um, so, you know, one zero, not feeling great. Um, but in this knockout competition, all you need is one to extend the game to, you know, an extra 30 minute period. So not extremely dire. We're not thinking about three points versus one point here. It's just survive in advance. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. plenty of time, 34th minute, Danny, fouled and fouled again like they were beating the shit out of Danny last yeah. night and I think being physical with him was part of their game plan I think so too I mean one physically in stature he's a smaller guy and two he is known for his temperament you know he can get hot he can, yeah, sure. lose, his, he can lose his cool a little bit and good teams take advantage of stuff like that yeah. it's on the scouting report trust me it's on the <laughs> scouting report <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah, man. I mean, I, I again, I thought he had a relatively great game, you know, I, compared I to the other was, ten guys on the pitch. Yeah, I thought he was our. I mean, I don't know if you, I would say our best player, but uh, the most impactful. Yeah, uh, I mean, the him, course of the game. I think him he was and ripping Alex, from the go. Yeah, yeah. I think him and Alex had had yeah. very, very good games last yeah. night. I also thought Rado off the bench in the second half. Um, I thought he had a, a pretty darn good game as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here in the 34th minute after that foul, uh, so Ring taking this free kick, it's closer to the the, the half line than the 18. Um, long ball goes in kind of to the left side of the six. Julio is there. Flag goes up for offside. There was a couple, again, going back to the officiating where it sucks in, in this stage of the Open Cup. There is no VAR. I think you only get that in the semifinal and the final. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I thought there was multiple close offside calls for both teams. Like the Kai Kamara one in the second half was very close. I think on watching it back on YouTube today, um, he probably was off. But yeah, there's just there was not a lot of like, I guess just because you can't, that you can't really second guess it at that point. You can't call for a review or anything like that. But yeah, I didn't see where somebody was offside on that. It, there was no goal, so it's not like we're yeah you know, super upset about it, but. Did we not get a corner out of that kind of? No, because we we should have, but they right. the flag yeah. was up. Yeah, That's what yeah. I'm saying. We should have had. Yeah. 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 Um, good call there. Forty second minute. Uh, this is where we have some worry, and still waiting on an update here as we're recording on Thursday afternoon. Forty second minute. Leo Weissenden goes down, non contact injury, kind of grabbing the back of his knee, lower leg there. Um, he was already playing with some KT tape on that right knee. Um, does get up under his own power after the trainers come check him out. You know, get, does a couple jogs, cuts on the sideline, comes mm-hmm. back in for the last three or four minutes. Um, definitely uncomfortable, but played through it through yeah. the end of the half. Gets subbed, of, of course, for Rado to start the second half, but didn't see him go down watching it live. Watched it multiple times back, trying to just see again with my zero medical degrees uh, to see, you know, what does this look like? What could this possibly be? Um, mm-hmm. And I think my best guess at this point is maybe meniscus. All right. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, but uh, it could be way worse for a non-contact knee. That, like, you know, meniscus, yeah. you can be back relatively quickly. I mean, but he was still moving on it. So, yeah. Yeah. Was- uh, nothing torn. I mean, you would think I've, I have firsthand experience with somebody tearing their ACL and continuing to play a high level sport for the rest of a game. Um, it can happen. So Damn. again, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully yeah. um, 
you know, we get we get good news on that here. I imagine we'll get an update Friday because I think there should be media availability before the team goes to, to Houston. Um, so Ratto in for, for Leo to start the second half, of course, still down 1-0. Sofian Jafal also comes in for Johan Valencia, who I thought he struggled. Um, and then watching the press conference later uh, in the evening, Josh thought so as well. Um, and so, look, hopefully nobody's feelings are hurt, or maybe I just haven't seen people bitching about that today of mm-hmm. like a coach criticizing a, a player's performance in the press conference. <laughs> But, you know, so no hurt feelings, I guess, yeah. people haven't seen that yet. But, um, yeah, I mean, watching on the replay, too, it, Valencia did not have his best game. And, like, I, to me, that's okay because he strung together a lot of good games. Yeah. And, again, in the full context of what the guys who have been healthy have been doing and going through schedule-wise, minutes-wise, um, you know, he's been he's been – he's had more good games than bad games, than off games in, in the last three weeks. Yeah, and like we said, nobody played particularly well here. And, I mean, the fact of the matter is we had tired legs, for yeah. sure. We had tired yeah. legs. So did yeah. they. It, it's not an excuse. For sure. Just saying we were a little tired. Yeah, it certainly looked it uh, after the first, I don't know, 15 minutes or so here in the second half. I Before we move on into too far into the second half, 10 seconds into the like, second half, Julio takes a charge. What was cut? What happened there? Kai Kamara just trucks Julio Cascante, doesn't make any attempt to go around him. Julio's occupying the space by himself. Mm-hmm. I don't know how this, and again, 17 fouls called in the first 45 minutes, no cards given out. Yep. And then and right wasn't... off the rip, right off the rip here, this guy goes not making a play on the ball, mm-hmm. completely away from it. Mm-hmm. Goes right through Julio. That's not a yellow, bro. You're wearing those verde tinted glasses again. <laughs> you can pull guys down to the ground and pitch and throw them down after the play. It's not a red. It's not a card. Yeah, yeah no. I, I mean, shit. We, uh, you, you know, you brought it up. Looking at the stats, 17 fouls, zero cards, and it wasn't like it was 17 ticky tack fouls in that first half. No, there was some physical play going on, and I, re- I mean, I didn't see what happened with this live because it was just. It's so out of Weird. what you expect to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, man, they had no control over this game. They were not ready. Uh, I don't know if it was the environment. Uh, it, it was a pretty physical match. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they weren't ready for it. I don't know if Chilowitz, uh kind of realizes after that that, yeah, I'd better fucking go to my pocket at some point here because 48th minute, finally, Pineda gets a yellow card for running through Rodney's back. Mm-hmm. Um, 53rd minute, uh, Danny plays a ball to the right side of the six, finds Rodney's head, um, can't put it on frame, but it does get deflected out for a corner. And maybe not even deflected. I think on the replay, Richie tried to keep it in, I think, and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and touches it out. So Austin gets a corner. Rigoni takes it. He finds Zardis's head on that backside, uh, I think the left, left side of the goal there. Um, but that header – goes right to uh, to Spencer Ritchie and that there. But again, I thought well, good service well, on a night when we didn't have a ton of it. Yeah. Um, and Zardis just not able to, to find that space in that. 55th minute, Alex Ring sweeps a ball from right to left. Rigoni uh, was there, but it gets headed out for a corner. And then his corner again, it finds Ratto's head, and that goes just a little wide. It looked like it may be a little high and wide to the right there. But um, again, I, I thought... Rigoni, maybe not even singling out players here, although I thought Rigoni's service during this period was good, especially off those corners. And Ratto being a threat and Jossie getting into space, getting his head onto these balls as well. Until about the 60th minute, I thought we looked like we were, we were certainly on the front foot to start the half. And I yep. felt at the time and on the rewatch, it's like, man, we, that was our chance to get that one and, and potentially then continue to kind of take over that second half. Because mm-hmm. Chicago didn't have a lot of juice till they made some some changes either. I mean, um, yeah, but, uh, like the the way they started that game, yeah, they definitely had a game plan in place to deal with what we want to want to do on yeah. the pitch. And you know, one thing we haven't been able to discuss the entire minutes breakdown here because it didn't happen mm-hmm. was the long ball from the back line switching field, getting us pushed up into our attack. We didn't have any of that. 
and it was yeah. you know they they were prepared to deal yeah. with what we had um and then once they got that first goal they moved even farther back into that back block yeah you know? so you do see at halftime you see an offensive substitution come into the game yeah so if you yeah, is a much more offensive minded player than valencia valencia yeah. great passer uh great def- oh, good defender uh and i like his physicality but you, yeah. you see an offensive player come on obviously i don't think leo gets subbed out if he doesn't get hurt but yeah, sure. being able to bring rotto in is fucking sweet <laughs> yeah because like where would we have gone uh you know so it was really nice to bring him in and he's somebody who's really going really growing on me here he's he looks like a he looks like a mother effer yeah for sure he looks like he mother effs some people when he's <laughs> I, on the pitch um so i uh that's encouraging right for sure and then after they get that first goal, they move back into another, you know, farther back into the block. We have to figure something else out here. But we never really tested that keeper. Well, and Josh, Josh talked about it in the presser afterwards um, that they went, you know, they came out in that five back uh, defensive look, really like a five four one at mm-hmm. times. Um, sometimes that that mid block up front when we were kind of in the horseshoe of sadness. That it was like a, a like a three two there like two forwards kind of and then uh, and then yeah. that line of three, um, the five back, and I think Josh kind of said something very similar is like it's not something we haven't seen before, and and beaten before, mm-hmm. but it's not something that Chicago had done. That's not a look they had given at all this Whoa. season. So okay. again, does take some time to adjust to a look that you are not prepared for. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, credit to, to their coaching staff for having that game plan. Um, but then that's also one thing that we saw the fan base, of course, like, of course, anybody who, who loves to jump on the wolf out train whenever there's a bad result, mm-hmm. of course, they're out in full force last night and this morning. Yeah. Um, but, and, and we had a couple tags, like shout out to our buddy Nino uh, tagged us in a, in a, a post this morning. And, and, you know, that got some traction, people discussing Wolf and his his lack of adjustments. Um, I didn't want to be too quick to jump into that conversation because we had talked about it a little bit last night. But before we rewatch anything, I think you and I both don't like to mm-hmm. really make sweeping statements about things like that, especially when we're you know less educated on on the ins and outs uh, of the, the tactical side in soccer. Um there was very much an adjustment offensively in the formation right around this time, like 60th minute Mm -hmm. when we're on the ball, it goes more to like a four, three, three, like more what we saw in 2022 Alex ring. When we had the ball was playing in the midfield, the last 30 minutes of the match. And you saw Johnny G and Lundqvist more back uh, uh, next to Ratto and Julio, and you also saw uh, Sophie Jeffel drop in some, depending on if we're coming off of a free kick opportunity or a, a corner kick opportunity when Julio sometimes was getting caught up in the front. Yeah. Um, but so I think to me, like, that's just, that's, I guess, what I would say to, to folks who are, are um, saying that, that Josh, and have been saying, right, this is not the first time we've heard, mm-hmm. uh, you know, stuff like this. Um, he, yes, he makes adjustments. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people just aren't paying attention or don't see it on the first watch. And like, and that's fine. Cause certainly we're not saying here, say, you know, suggesting yeah. that, that we catch every little thing like that. We it's quite the opposite. Um, but I think we just, again, collectively, we still need to be a little bit more measured in our takes. Um, Cause most of the time, and this applies to us too. Most of the time we're fucking wrong. <laughs> like, like you said, uh, whether it was last pod or a couple pods ago, it's like adjustments are, are pretty frequently made by any professional coach or mm-hmm. any coach at a, a competitive level, but that doesn't mean that the adjustments always work. So c- can I give some, some, some credit to people who may say, or give some credence to people who may say, okay, like he's not making the right adjustments. Sure. Okay. That's fair. And I will hear that out. But for anybody to say that he doesn't make adjustments is I, I have to dismiss that. It's silly. It's incorrect. Correct. Yeah, it, it's wrong. Um, yeah. And also, I mean, like, and I'm not trying to be like a, a jerk here. Like if you and I haven't been, I haven't had a chance to take a look at this thread uh, from Nino here. Um, but I don't want to see I don't it, like if you're screaming about it, I don't want to just see the word adjustment. 
Yeah, yeah sure. What Some are you? What, what are you looking for? What yeah. What are you looking for with the current s- status of this roster? Yeah. What would what would you have looked for? And and I genuinely would like to know. So if you if you are listening and like you have something that you would like to see, please send it to us. Yeah. I want to learn more about that too, whether you're right or wrong, and and you know, whether I'm right or wrong in my evaluation of it. Mm-hmm. But we can't just go online and be screaming out the word adjustments <laughs> and just expect that everything is gonna be different because just like you said, go back and rewatch the game, y'all. See yep. if you can catch on to it for yourself. And that's yep. you know, that's a learning opportunity for anyone in that situation. Yep. So, I mean, and look, the I have it on a great source that the adjustment is coming. And it's a beautiful Argentinian man yeah. who is going to be healthy. Yeah. And he's going to be back in the starting lineup. Yeah. And yeah. he's a very good player. So that's <laughs> going to be a great adjustment for the team. And also, like you said it last night, I don't know when you said it, what state of drunkenness, but like <laughs> maybe we maybe we hit the proverbial wall with the players we're currently playing with. Sure. It, I mean, hey, it, the sixth game in 18 days, yeah. and we are still just a ways away from getting that reprieve, getting a full week off. Um, Mm -hmm. we have Saturday, Houston, we have Wednesday loons at home, then RSL at home. Then we have a week, then it's Saturday RSL home. We don't play again until that next Saturday at SKC. Um, so man, like, and uh, let's finish out this match here before we start talking, looking too much down the road. Cause obviously we'll preview Saturday here in a minute. Um, I just want to say last thing for that is outplayed, outclassed, outcoached last night. Yeah. That's what happened when we lost yeah. the game. Deserve to lose the game. Yes, yeah. and I and I think and and I would put emphasis on outplayed at first because the players yeah. did not play well. No, the team no. did not play well. It, it was not not fully on on Josh and I. And again, I don't I don't know what coach comes in there last night with what magical tactics to make those tired legs be fresher. Yeah, and make you know guys not be injured. And I, I don't know. Let, let's keep moving here. 64th minute Diego does come on for Rodney so you get about 30 minutes of Diego and that was encouraging to see continuing to ramp up the number of minutes he's getting in these games um 68th minute ring gets a steal in the midfield starts a three-on-three break Zardis down the middle Fagu on the left um plays the through ball to Zardis just a little heavy it, get too close like Richie's able to get it before G can can run onto it um yeah so again, just one of those almost, and I, I think Alex could have done a little bit better there with the ball to give Zardis a, a better chance to make a play on it. Um, mm-hmm. It was a tight window, though. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a striker on this team who gets that ball. Yeah, the rosters do. Yeah, for sure. Seventy fifth minute, great ball from Shakiri uh, to uh, Torres, who who had just come on as well. Um, I think at the same time that Shabilko did. And uh, Torres puts his shot off off the post there. <laughs> and we, yep. uh, you know, exhale just for a moment there because, uh, you know, staved off disaster just for a few moments, 76th minute. Finley in for Rigoni, uh, then 77th minute after a Chicago corner. We get it cleared, but Chicago kind of, you know, gets back onto the ball because we cleared it right to, to their back line there. Um, they work it around the horn to that left side. Torres plays it into Shakiri, um, kind of right on the left side of the six there in the north end. Uh, fires a shot, goes right at Stuver, and he just parries it right back to Shakiri. Yep. And I think this is like where he showed. I mean, he showed his quality a lot, like pretty much the full yes. ninety last night. But in this moment, the composure to not just fire another shot back at Stuver and hope that you sneak it through, but to turn and find Shabilko in that space in the middle of the box. Um, he was the best player on the pitch last night and it showed again right there. And, and two nil, we, uh, you know, the hope starts to, to leave the stands, I think. Uh, and so did some of the fans. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they went with them. <laughs> yeah. Um, 84th minute there was, this was actually a, a pretty promising run of play here down the end. Again, I don't think, it gave anybody delusions of, uh, you know, getting two before the final whistle and, and forcing that extra time. But 84th minute, you get a flurry of corners here. 
for the good guys. Um, good chance from the right, Diego to Finley at the near post. Um, and I mean, this is this is the type of night. It just it was not Austin's night. It was Chicago's game. Finley flicks it on with his head. It hits Richie in the fucking face. He mm-hmm. knows nothing about that shot. Mm-hmm. And to me, just got lucky that his face was in the way because that should have been a goal. Yeah. Yeah. Next minute, um, we can, Stuvino shows up, comes out, out near midfield this time on the right sideline, and actually like plays a good ball. Mm-hmm. Down the line, Zardis runs onto it. He draws a foul. Um, so we get another Diego free kick um that finds alex ring's head and he sends it just over the bar yeah um but again those are, you're just inches away from both finley and ring scoring there off diego's service so like i kind of alluded to earlier i was not super pleased with the way diego looked his fitness again it's been a story for the fan base um a point of contention right but and and i, I see your grimace there i agree right my emotional that's my emotional feeling but at least at this point, right, he's actually working his way back from an injury where he could not do much. And you got that groin injury. It's not like you can stay in shape yeah. for almost any professional sport, yeah. uh, but especially soccer. And uh, so I think right now I'm a little bit more patient with his fitness than I was to start the season when we were debating that. Um, That's right. But on the, on the rewatch, man, like, the service, the chance creation. That's why That's why this guy was second in the league in assists last year. And I cannot wait till it all comes together for him. I think it will at some point over the next month. He will continue to get in better shape. And you saw with the relatively fresh legs that he does have. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, clear mind coming on with, with a little bit more energy. You haven't been running to the ground like some of our guys have over the last few weeks. Um I just came away from the rewatch feeling a lot better about Diego in that aspect uh, than I did walking out of Q2 last night. I, I think that's a fair assessment for sure. And we just, we really miss him on those set pieces. Mm-hmm. Those are scoring chances. Mm-hmm. Those are opportunities. That's when you get to run a play. Yeah. You know, like you get, you get a lot going there. So we've really, really missed him there. And uh, you know, we said it on the last pod that it was clear that he's being ramped up. Mm-hmm. His minutes keep getting a little longer. Um, so you saw him get, you know, half an hour here and he wasn't the most active out of, you know, the, or the most active that he can be the player yeah. that he is. Yeah. Um, and hopefully that comes back sooner rather than later. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm hoping for 60 minutes out of him on Saturday. Yeah, I hope so. I was, I, I really was trying to, that. I was trying to do my best to, uh, you know, be Dr. Coach speak, <laughs> listening yeah. to that presser last night and, I, I don't have a lean on whether or not he's going to start on Saturday. I don't. Not from yeah. what Josh said. Um, if I had to make a bet, I'd say no. Um, sure. But I want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, sure. I really do want it. Yeah. Uh, Lima comes in for Gallagher, 86 minute. That was pretty much the last play of consequence. Maybe could have added a couple in there. But I, and I did see some people questioning that. On like To me at the time, that it made sense because – yeah yeah of course lima for gallagher because if you're looking for to try to ping balls into the box lima's a better option than johnny g in that aspect yeah and also johnny g was gassed at this point true true also true um so you know two no loss out of the open cup um although you know, if you want you want to be that toxic positive uh farthest we've ever made it in the open cup one yeah. win after getting we got a buy too because of our success in the league last year so yep. uh probably not getting that buy next year but it is still a long season so 57 percent austin possession last night 12 shots to nine in favor of chicago eight shots to two on target in favor of chicago but eight of those nine austin shots were taken inside the box um and another thing, and, I, and I'm just going to piggyback off Landon from uh, Monday's episode of Moon Tower, where he actually it might have been last week, but I, I remember him in the last week or so talking about shots on target and how it's not always the best indicator of how threatening you were offensively because you look at Ragoni's two free kicks that go into the side netting. You know, they're very, very close. Those are not bad attempts on net yeah. whatsoever, but does not count 
as on target. Same with Rado right in front of net with the header that goes just wide. Ring that just puts it over the crossbar. Um, you know, I, I just think, that, to me, that's uh, the context of the day, maybe, right, of the episode is that shot's on target. I, I, I didn't feel, you know, two is not a great number, of course, in that stat, but uh, I don't think it was quite as bad as that in a vacuum would make you feel. Yeah, I, and I'm, I think the only thing that I would add to that and um, this is, again, just in the, the context and circumstance of this game. Mm-hmm. Backup keeper, they got five dudes in the back line. Maybe you try them from outside the 18 a couple times. Sure. You know, maybe you, give it a, maybe you try them there. Um, but that's just hindsight. Hats off to Chicago. Um, hats off to the fans who came after you and I after the game. <laughs> yeah, those guys were y'all. Man. Good on y'all. <laughs> and we'll be, don't worry. <laughs> Sorry, we we remember. Um, you know, uh, look, disappointed, disappointing. Um, another cup that we are now eliminated from, another trophy that we can no longer add to our case. Yeah, um, or start so, the trophy case. Yeah, yeah just nice. yeah. You know, <laughs> hopefully we we bought the case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully it's ready. <laughs> Um, so yeah, disappointing. And you saw, you know, you saw the lay of the tournament. Yeah. The chips, uh, I mean, the pieces had aligned for us and, um, we had a real, real opportunity here. And, um, I guess now I can get more into the, the Verde council from last night, uh, sure. and talking to Bali, the OG, um, yeah. you know, and he said, you know, that it felt like the season was like over at this point. And I was like, mm-hmm. how could you like, how could you feel that way? You know? And he was like, look, you know, just another opportunity to not bring, you know, we just lost another opportunity to bring silverware home. And I was like, shit. Okay. Like I haven't really looked at it entirely from that perspective, obviously coming from the NBA, coming from the more, you know, the American sports here, we don't have these cups throughout the season although the right. NBA is trying, about to yeah NBA is trying to add this tournament now um so they don't you know we don't have this this aspect of it when it, to me it's you know you get into the playoffs you put the ball down let's go play yeah you yeah. know um so he was able to like and I and that I can I I, I can relate to that now you know, I'm, I'm understanding that stance more now um where it's like you know we we might not be able to add a single trophy to the <laughs> to the case um, <laughs> this entire season, you know, and nobody can sit here and tell me that, you know, we, we would be favored to get a supporter shield or yeah, favored so. to win an MLS cup. Yeah. Um, or even maybe a series, a first round series. Yeah, to, for especially sure. Depending on who you match up with. For sure. So, you know, it, it is very disappointing and I'm disappointed in the loss and a very winnable game, but, we got to dust ourselves off and go get these jerk faces on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, um, while I agree with you, like we said at the top, had fun last night, as we always do, pretty much regardless of outcome, overall, our experience, at least you and I, we, we make it fun, right? We see mm-hmm. all our, our friends there in the North End, especially those two pirates. Uh, and then, you know, last night, like you said, uh, being able, like, we just kind of went over to, to say what's up to RB and everybody else who was standing by the, the fan reactions, uh, you know, those guys recording over there and we ended up staying for, I don't know, 45 minutes, just talking with those boys. And that was, that was a blast. Um, but the game itself, it just was not fun. It was, it was winnable and there should have been a better performance all around. Um, But the team, the team knows that the coaches know that the players know that, um, and and sixth game in eighteen days is not an excuse, but it is the reality, it, and yeah. that that looked like a, a tired team, for sure out mm-hmm. there last night. Um, Look, you know, and, and I, what's that? We're still not at the end of May. No, no, and we're we not. can still add six points mm-hmm. that actually count. Yep. In the regular season, yeah. So, the sky is not falling, y'all. We're we're disappointed. We're sad. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, like I said, it was a dick like, kick, emotional sure. hangover. Yeah. Um, but you know, 
we got we got two more opportunities to close out this month and mm -hmm. got to respond. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and I think just, I guess, <laughs> let me back up. I want to add two more things. Okay. We talked about the five back. We talked about the, the mid block up front um, that was causing our, us to struggle, especially in that first half. Um, they also did a great job of taking away, I thought, the attacking mids in Rigoni and Redis. And then later on in, in Finley and Diego, I thought they marked those guys very tightly, very closely, and didn't let them be factors in the buildup. Um, and that's something that we've seen, whether it was in this formation or any other iteration of what this team has rolled out this season, taking away those guys in the Driussi type spots, in the DP spots where him and Ragoni have been operating and some Diego earlier in the season. Um, that's something that we have to see the coaching staff continue to uh, game plan for and strategize around because if, if those guys aren't effective, that's where our most talented players are mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they have to be involved. So we need to continue to see them iterating on that and finding new ways to keep those positions involved, no matter which player is occupying them. Um, and then it's also on the players to go out there and make sure they don't get taken out of the game by any sort of tactics that are thrown at them, curve balls, like a, a five back or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think that's something to look forward to, or, or look at over the next couple of games as well, especially integrating Diego and, and Seba back into this rotation. Um, and then you kind of mentioned it too about the tournament. Like it's a little extra sting with this loss because you look at the teams that are left and Cincy, I think is clearly the biggest threat on paper. Um, you know, the, the eight teams left Cincy, they get to play Pittsburgh. Uh, Birmingham also won last night. So look, man, look, yeah. two USL teams upset MLS teams last night, but I've been told that our, you know, we should just pack it in because Shakiri <laughs> had the, the best game of his season. Yeah. Uh, again, it's the sky is not falling. The le the standing in the league was not affected yep. at all, Yep. but still disappointed. So let's, let's look ahead here. Let's preview Houston coming up on Saturday. Don't need to go through the entire history again we know 2021 two wins and one loss uh three two and two one at home oh three loss on the road 2022 swept them won both two one loss or two one win at their place three one win at our place and then march 18th of this year two nil loss in houston that was the beginning of austin's eight match winless streak in the league um but houston been struggling after a more a more promising start to the season. Um, they did beat the Loons 4-0 in the Open Cup on Tuesday. Helped that Minnesota got a red card early on because uh, all four goals came after that. Mm -hmm. Houston also rotated pr pretty heavily, got a lot of rest, so you don't like to see that for our chances. But Houston's form in the league is is not great either. Um, they've taken on some injuries. Tate Schmidt went out, I think, shortly after maybe the match after we played against them in March. Um, and then Teenage Hadebi, or Hadibi, I think it's Hadebi, um, broke his ankle. So both of them essentially out for the year. I think Schmidt out for the year. Hadebi, I think, September is when he's supposed to be back. But that 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 ankle injury lines up with their dip in form where they have not had an MLS win since April 22nd. So over a month for Houston uh, did draw Dallas late on last week up there in Frisco, but lost one nil on the road at Minnesota. They were without Ache Ache in that game because he got a red against Seattle the previous match, which was also a one nil loss. They also drew Seattle or Seattle drew RSL nil nil at home. Their last league win was a 1-0 win at home over a lowly Inter-Miami side. So, I again, they already beat us once this year. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think this is a very, very winnable game, even for a tired Austin FC side, because Houston has been going through a similar schedule as well, and they haven't had the results either. So um, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic here, you know, again – you're going to play about 72 hours after the last game. So there's going to be tired legs on both sides. Houston had about 24 hours more of rest playing on Tuesday. Um, 
any observations for you about their recent form? Obviously, we've been keeping an eye on them with our perfect bets and things like that. Uh, how do you feel about Houston? You know, Ache Ache should be in there and starting. Yeah, uh, uh, again, there's a lot up in the air for the, for our team right now. Um, what's up with Seba? Are, is he going to be on the team? Are we going to get 60 out of Diego? Is he starting? Um, but with all that, nothing – gives you a boost like a rivalry game mm-hmm. you know nothing is a uh, there's maybe a good ice bath is a is a good cure for <laughs> tired legs um but nothing gives you that little injection to you know to to fight through that like playing a team you really don't like and i hope we don't like those guys because they don't like us and mm. i don't like them yeah <laughs> that was probably the worst part about my night last night. I got back and Moochie took a dynamo right in the middle of my fucking bedroom floor. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, look, uh, very winnable game again, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I look, I feel good. I I, I do. I, I think mm-hmm. I said to you last night before the uh, Chicago game, I was like, man, I don't know that I feel that, that I feel overly confident in this match right now, because I feel like we should win. Um, <clears throat> but with this Houston matchup, you know, they got us once and now this is official Copa Tejas business. Mm-hmm. And um, is it, it's right. This yep, is first our, one for us. This is official Copa Tejas business. We have a chance to put ourselves in first place. Yeah. They drew. Yeah. With a win, they drew Dallas last week. Yeah. So, so let's go ahead and do that. Get the job done. Yeah. Of course, Austin, like you mentioned, first Copa Tejas match this season after two warm up matches, two preseason, regular season, whatever you want to call it. They didn't uh-huh. count <laughs> towards our supporters trophy. Um, we know there will be no Owen Wolf and waiting on an update on Leo Bison. And, um, but jo- Josh did give an update on Seba last night. He said, he was in the, he's kind of smiling. He said he was in the office a couple times this week trying mm-hmm. to trying to get his way out there on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and he mentioned, of course, he said that the last thing we can do is bringing him back too early. And then we're looking at another four to six week injury. Um, that would so officially make our season over. <laughs> yeah. That you would, lose him for another month. Yeah. You're yes, probably, losing him for another four to six weeks. Yes. Our season would be over. Yeah. Um, so he, the, 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 here's the good thing. He said he's been in training. He's close. And then maybe hopeful for Saturday. So maybe hopeful. The ever the ever good H designation. Yeah. <laughs> hopeful. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I mean, look, you, we can shout out our boy Kako. Put out the cryptic. You know, mm-hmm. good news is coming. Um, maybe that good news is that Seba shows up on the bench here on Saturday and and can play. 10, 20 minutes at the end of the match. I, I imagine just seeing him in uniform on the bench, warming up as a sub would be a boost to the morale of the team. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, this time yesterday, I was thinking at the earliest RSL next Saturday, we'd see him on the bench, mm-hmm. but he's been in training. So who knows? You know, We'll be keeping our eyes on that lineup for sure. 45 minutes before kickoff on Saturday. Do we have any um, sort of like precedent of like having a dude come back and just throwing him right in the starting lineup? Us on an often extended absence like this, I don't think so. Not off the top of my head. Yeah, I mean, we didn't suffer a lot of injuries last year. Hardly any. Basically, is, just Hector. It is Seba. Yeah, true. It is Seba. If he's true. like, bro, you got to start me. <laughs> ah, it's hard to we'll argue. See. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. I think they'd be a little bit more responsible than that. They're going to trust the data. We know how they roll. Yeah. Um, all right. I guess uh, let's talk uh, potential rotation here. Maybe not potential rotation, but how do we see Coach Wolf rotating this squad? I think the easiest way is to start up top. This is Maxi's game again. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, he plays well in these games. Well, first time he was, I think he hit the post once early on in that one, but uh, obviously the, the whole team performed poorly. Mm-hmm. Back in March, but um, a chance for Maxi and the team to redeem themselves there. Um, and then also, I want to god damn, do I want to see Maxi fucking score here and do the fucking arrow celebration? Fuck you, Amin Bassi, just fucking penalty merchant. It's the Ooh. only way that guy can score, and he's been doing the, the fucking bow and arrow celebration. I don't like it, so give you me Maxi, huh? 
He's still doing it. I think he did. I think at least his second goal. So like the game after us, when he got another penalty on that streak of like four or five straight games, mm-hmm. uh, I think he did it again. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I guess let's let's get. I imagine you agree with me, Max. He's going to start this one. Yeah. Um, what else do we think happens here rotation wise? Because I think desires. We both want to see Diego, right? And hope that he can get go 60-65. I would love to see Diego Rigoni paired. Yeah. Really would. Um, <clears throat> and I think that that's possible. Yeah. I do. I think that that is – I think it's on the table. Um, and I think it could happen. If it doesn't happen, if, if he can't start, I mm-hmm. guess I'll give myself that caveat here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope it's Finley. Rigoni. Yeah. So I, I hope it's Finley Rigoni. And, um, you know, I'm not trying to take a dig at Rodney here. He, he, he played very well in his, uh, you know, time there with these injuries. Uh, but I think it's time for some Finley juice. Um, so if no Diego, Maxi, man, <laughs> Rigoni, mm-hmm. Finley, Danny, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't. Who do you pair him with? Sophie's been good. Sophie's been good. I agree. Um, I think ultimately you probably see Johan get back out there with Danny. Yeah. Um, give him another go, chance at redeeming himself after a, a fairly poor first half against Chicago yesterday. Um, I think. Again, I, I'm with you. We kind of talked about it in the stands last night where it's like, okay, like we've had – it was fun as hell, and he deserved the celebration at the time for the goal against New Mexico and very, very solid performances got on the score yeah. sheet against San Jose, right? Um, but I think it's – it's the, the Rodney thing is should be coming to an end here as yeah. Diego gets more fit, as Finley has – fresher legs at this point, I would imagine, uh, even with the, the age disparity between the two. And of course, over the next week and a half, two weeks, working Seba back into the rotation. Um, I think we're in a good place if we go back to seeing Rodney Reddit's minutes become more sparse as they have been. I don't think it should be zero going forward. I this agree. guy has earned a spot at least on the bench. And when he comes in the match, I don't feel bad. Yep. I don't think like, oh, here's our super sub. We're going to really get the juice going now. But, um, you know, not taking anything away from what he's done recently. I just think that we're getting – we hopefully are getting past that point. Yes, I'm with you there. And then I think it's Rado, Julio, Cap. Yep. Um, I think we see Lima in for Johnny G. I think, G. I think uh, we see Lima in for Johnny G and then Lundy with the start. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right, let's close it out. Score predictions. I know you were not predicting an Austin FC draw or a loss against the Orange team. So how much is Austin FC winning by on Saturday? Hmm. I'm going to go 1-0. 1-0? Yeah. Okay. I like it. 1-0 road victory. Uh, it's hard to – I mean, I know I've been going a lot with the two – the two ones, the three ones. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It's hard. To, it's hard to say, oh, we're going to find two goals here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, one nil. Um, and, yeah, give us that maxi goal. Yeah. We'd love give that. Off of Diego. Off of Diego service. All right. We'd love to see that. Um, I'm going to go one one. And I really think this, again, this game is so winnable. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm with you where, like, it's very hard coming off what we've just done, even with the results, like you get two in Seattle, that was great. Mm-hmm. More Probably more of the anomaly. You play that game out 10 times. I don't know how many more times we win it. Yep. Um, and then, of course, late goal against Toronto. We, we talked about that too. It was, like, it was very close to being yep. super frustrating. Um, so, yeah, I think I think 1-1 one, one draw. Um, and, and I want to loop this discussion in here before we move on. Okay. Over until we get that reprieve, we got Houston, we've got Minnesota, we've got RSL. The latter two are at home. Mm-hmm. How many points do does Austin need to get out of the 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 possible nine? How many mm-hmm. points do they need to get for you to 
feel okay about the end of this congested stretch? To feel okay? Yeah. Or I guess maybe give me tears. Give me, I feel shitty. I feel okay. And I feel, I feel oh, great. I feel okay if we give four. Okay. Anything less than four, I'm going to feel shitty. Okay. Um, just given this opponents, mm-hmm. two home matches, like, yeah. Um, you know, hopefully the return of Seba, um, you know, a, a healthy Diego. Um, and, you know, I feel great if we get seven. Yeah, I think we're in lockstep up there. Uh, four was the first number that came to my head is like out of these three, mm-hmm. you have to get four. You have to win one of those two. You got to win one of these. Yeah, you got to win one of these. Um, and so I, I think, for that matter, I think getting a result here in Houston, again, we want three. Mm-hmm. Are we happy with the draw? No. Um, I don't even know if I'd go to say go as far as saying I would be satisfied with the draw, but I can live with it. Yep. I can live with a point on the road here with, you know, with all the things we have talked about. So, mm-hmm. um, man, if, but if you do get a win here on Saturday, things are – we're, yeah. we're whiplashing right back around to, to partying. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, look, we're out of the open cup now. So yeah. like getting, getting a, getting three points here on Saturday. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Huge. So I mean, we're all congested over there in the West. There's plenty of room for us to move up. Yeah. And then look, we talked about it. Some people looked at us a little crazy, but the only team I'm afraid of in the West is LAFC. Absolutely. Like, like full on. Like, there we is, have no shot. <laughs> we, have, we cannot beat this team. We're playing them in LA. Yeah. We can't win. Like, yeah. I, I, if, yeah. if it's, if it's one game, fine. There's, there's maybe yeah. you can sneak yes. out a crazy result, but the fact that if you're playing, if you're in that wild card spot, you're going to, unless something crazy happens in the second half of the season, you're gonna catch LAFC with the one-eight matchup, three-game series. It's not yeah. happening. No, it's not happening. Um, but then outside of that, we've beaten Seattle mm-hmm. in Seattle. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we 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 lost to a Dallas team with ten dudes on when we had ten guys on the field and mm-hmm. none of them were Seba. So uh, you know, I'm and I'm look. I'm also not saying that we would be favored in those matchups. That we sure. would be the clear cut better team. And I'm going in there saying, we're going to walk away from here advancing. <laughs> right. But I am saying that they're all winnable games. Yeah. Those are teams that we can beat. In fact, those are teams that we have beat this mm-hmm. year or even drawn with. Like we got, we got a point in Portland too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, now that we have been eliminated from this cup, it's time to shift the focus back to, this MLS season and what we can make of it for the rest of this year. Um, and we still have plenty of time, y'all. Yeah. We're going to be playing games until fucking almost Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've still got, I mean, again, we're, we are just a few weeks away from being at the halfway point, right? 13 mm-hmm. games down, 21 to go, but, you know, 17 is that halfway mark. So SKC on the road will be the halfway point of the season. I think that's June 10th. But again, yep. if you get a win here on Saturday, which both of us think it's very winnable, um, and you get some help with other results, you'd be sitting on 19 points, right? Three or 14 matches. Um, 19 points can potentially be the fifth seed. On Sunday night, when, when match day 14 or 15, whatever this is, is over. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you need a lot of help from a San Jose, a Minnesota, a Vancouver, a Portland result, but... You ain't dropping down if you get to win here. Yeah. And it's so congested right here between five and, and 11, really. There's three points separating the fifth seed from the 11 seed right now. So, um, yeah. you know, I think you, you get those four points over the next three matches as a baseline. You are still very much in that mix, seven, eight, nine. You get to that six, seven point mark over this next week and a half. Then you're in that five, six, seven mix, mm-hmm. feeling a lot better. Um, cause I think when we were talking with all those, all our buddies out there, um, uh, by the zebra gate last night, I think it was Jordan who made the point is like, you have to be top seven yes. because wild card while you get the wild card 
game. And if you advance past that, you get a three game series again, you're catching LAFC. Uh, so I thought a good point made by Jordan last night while we were talking to him. Um, yeah. But it's like, and if there's like, if somebody has a team that they're like flat out, just too scared to like, you would feel like we're playing LAFC. Let it, let us know. <laughs> yeah. So like, we sure. can look at it. Like, is it St. Louis? Not for me. Seattle's the one. Seattle and Dallas are the two that would be in the next tier for me in terms of I I would rather not see them, especially in a lower seeded scenario where we have to play two on the road mm-hmm. if we take it to to that third game. But um, rather not see them is not the same as fuck. We cannot be this. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, we, we and can I mean, beat. We're yeah. making these observations right now under the pretense that we're healthy. Of course. Healthy, mainly meaning we have our best player. <laughs> yeah, we have number 10 in there. Yes, number 10 is playing. Yeah. So, yeah, man, like, you know, I, I'm bummed about the cup. It sucks. Let's fucking move our focus over to this MLS season and see what happens. We're still a talented team that's just been dinged up all year. Yeah. Well, and again, literally nothing about the league, which we were so jazzed on on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Literally nothing changed. Exactly. Exactly. Let's move on here. Uh, a couple pieces of news. Uh, the, the league did release the list of the top 25 selling jerseys uh, oh. in, in the league. Uh, Saba, number 14 on that <laughs> list. Somehow Ben fucking Bender, number 11 from Charlotte, who doesn't starts like half the games, if that, for them. I know he's like the, he was their number one pick last year and all that. Yeah. But His name's Ben Bender? Yeah, Ben Bender. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> also uh congrats to the u20s three nil win over fiji so advanced into the knockout stage still one more match to come i believe on friday against the slovenians um owen got another start was subbed off at the half um so i mean uh, they expected heavy rotation there sure well and yeah. you just love to see the trust of that coaching staff um and yep. him playing a little bit again playing in a different position from where he's been playing with austin um kid's pretty malleable i think can't wait to get him back to fuck yeah <laughs> because yeah. particularly because what you just said right there yeah. he is you can dispense him in different areas you can go set him out in different different positions which we're gonna have to get creative with when we're back to full strength here yeah well, and, and again, like think about if we do – like if worst-case scenario on Leo, right, we get bad mm-hmm. news tomorrow, um, then you're probably – then you're potentially, as Josh Wolf and the coaching staff, considering shifting this formation around again in the coming weeks. Yeah. Because then, we're, then we lose that center back depth that we've had. Um, yeah. And it's just maybe not sustainable throughout a full season. I mean, yeah, then maybe you drop, you know, drop Ratto in there, pair him with Julio. We go back to the 4-3-3. Three, three. You yeah. move Alex back up to the midfield when we can. Right. We'll see. Long we'll way see. to go. Yep. And, Long uh, way to go. You know, pieces coming in and out health-wise and World Cup-wise, all that stuff. Let's talk last, last business day here, then we'll close it out with the nonsense. Um, Dynamo Dose coming up Sunday, 5 p.m. Central, out there in Houston. Um Dynamo Dose this season, three wins, two draws, four losses. Of course, one of those losses coming at the hands of FC2. They have won both of those two draws, the, the P- PK shootouts, rather. Um, mm-hmm. So they're sitting on 13 points here uh, from, I believe, their, what was it, nine games played. Let me pull up their page once again. <clears throat> Dynamo Dose looking at the standings here. They are currently in ninth in the West. Again, nine games played, 13 points, 16 goals for, 12 against, so a plus four goal differential there. Um, of course, in that first meeting back on March 24th, opening up the pitch uh, for next pro play, Houston scored first. Uh, enjoying that 49th minute uh, scores to take the lead with the, the Cristiano Ronaldo celebration that <laughs> night. Um, you know, a lot of, lot of heat on certain celebrations this week. I didn't think we gave that kid nearly enough uh, <laughs> at the time. Then Valentin Noel, uh, you know, he started the season extremely hot. This was a big reason why. Brace scores in the 64th to equalize, and then the winner – in the 83rd minute, tapping it in for Austin FC2's first home victory. Um, since then, uh, although they are in ninth, 
uh, Houston Dynamo Dose is three points out of fourth place uh, right now. So again, some congestion in that table Mm -hmm. as well, looking at their recent form. Uh, Dynamo Dose, like they have been to me on paper, again, not going back and watching fucking Dynamo 2 film, but... Uh, Drew North Texas on the road won that PK shootout. Um, they took a one nil loss to Whitecaps two on the road up there in Canada. They also took a two one home loss to Tacoma Defiance. But those are all good teams. Their losses this year, those two, then Rapids two, they lost two to one, and of course losing to us two to one as well. So there is there are really no blemishes on this Dynamo Dose record, um, mm-hmm. I, I think they're a quality side. I have definitely seen worse teams play FC2. <laughs> for sure. That's for sure. No question about that. Um, let's take a look at, I guess, maybe take a look back at what we saw last Friday with that rotated lineup. Of course, some of those FC2 guys uh, up with the first team for that Seattle match midweek last week. So we saw, you know, we saw Micah Burton get the start. We saw Alonzo Ramirez get the start, EJ get the start, Mm -hmm. Um, Hafferty at center back with Kip on the bench. So I think with the week off here, and not just a week, nine days between that Quakes 2 loss and this Dynamo Dose clash out there in Houston, I think, E, that we see more of the norm here. Like, I think we see CJ get back out there. I think we see David for sure get back out there, Kip back out there. Um and I think, to me, the only question is, like, do we see um, Valti get back into that midfield? Do we see Steve get back into that midfield? I feel like it's – I may I may be misremembering here, but I feel like it's been a while since we saw a Steve start. Um, so w- what do you think we see here on Sunday? I mean, I'm, I'm in lockstep with you there. Um, okay. You know, I was thinking back to the last time we did FC2 predictions and what I was – trying to put together because I genuinely felt like, you know, we couldn't start CJ and we couldn't start David because of this potential that, you know, shit, <laughs> we're in such a tight spot. We might be one of these kids to play. Yeah. Um, so now with the time off now with everyone getting back into, you know, their more, uh, you know, regular routine with the squad here for the FC two boys, mm-hmm. I do expect to see, uh, the 11 that we usually rock with. Yeah. CJ, David, AOC, yeah. D, Noel, Captain Joe, Kippy, Sally Maz, mm-hmm. um, Asensio. Chaz. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I uh, We're going to have, you know, and again, you know, this is a team we want to beat. Yeah. yeah. So sure. I think There's we're going to have juice there. Yeah. We're going to have our best 11 out there and we're going to get the job done. Fucking love those boys. All right. By how much? Uh, I think we beat them two one again. Two one again. Like we said, like I, this is a team that I, de- I definitely respect. Like they're they're yeah. definitely no slouches. And like you said, you went through their record there, and uh, nothing to to really hang your head at and be like, man, you know, we just played a shitty game, lost to some quality teams. Um, but yeah, you know, we're the be- and then with that being said, we're better. Yeah, we're better. I think so too. Um, I'm going two two. Austin wins in the PK shootout, I think, uh-huh. gives – and maybe this is just an emotional prediction here. I want Damien to be back on center stage and redeem himself after last week. And I have full confidence that he's going to. Mm-hmm. The kid's been so fucking good. And I just – I want to see him move past this as quick as possible. And a, a, a shootout opportunity is is the perfect way, I think, uh, or perfect chance to do that cool. as quick as possible. Um so we'll see. Obviously, I would prefer the full three points. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, giving some respect to Houston at home um, as well, uh, as much as I don't want to. Trying to keep some semblance of, of realism there. Um, no real time here to go around the league, but I definitely want to dive more into MLS happening. So maybe over the, the course of the next week, maybe on Sunday, we can talk a little bit about the results but again last saturday was the highest scoring day of this season 45 goals scored uh and when you look at q2 where there was only one goal scored it's like <laughs> holy cow everybody else was having a lot more fun um let's get into the nonsense here to close out episode 58 we will start with the best ball uh, week 14 did see moon tower those bastards 
come out on top once again, 56 points behind, uh, I think, a brace from both Henny Mukhtar and Daniel Gazdag. I think Gazdag gets his first non-PK goal of the year. I think was sitting on four goals all from the spot coming in. Did get one, but then scored from open play on his second. They also got 10 from Julian Carranza, nine from those Philly defenders with the clean sheet, eight from Stuver with the clean sheet. So 56 points on the week. North and Pod, second place, though, so not too shabby, especially with DNPs from Taxi Funtas and Lorenzo Insigne. Uh, we do get 10 from Roman Berkey, 10 from Kai Wagner with that clean sheet, both of those guys with the clean sheet, and then 7, 7, 7, 7 are our other scores here from Vela, Cucho, Evander, and Ryan Gauld back on the pitch for Vancouver. Edging out, we are Austin TV by one point, 47 points for those boys. So they do hold on to the second spot overall with the third place finish on the week. 10 from Tiago Almada, 9 from Zellerayan, 8 from Nick Lima getting on the score sheet. Ooh. We are Austin TV, 6 from Giassi with his game winning goal off the bench. Um, and then 43 for RB and the boys over there at Texas Ring of Fire. Uh, doesn't look like Brenner. Brenner just might sit out till the transfer. Uh, so, of course, that spot going to be replaced in the transfer window by RB. Diego Rubio also didn't play. And Martin Poss was rotated out for Dallas. So, some Ooh. interesting DNPs there. Did get 13 from Lucho Acosta, 8 from Andre Blake, and 7 from Leo Weissen, and 43 points on the week for Texas Ring of Fire. So, taking a look at the overall standings, of course, Moon Tower still in first, 664. You are Austin TV in second, 610. The Northern Podcast, 596. So one more, another good week could get us back into that second place position. Mm -hmm. Texas Ring of Fire, 574. And another shout out to those boys, because RB, they did take down week 13. That was their first win of the season. Uh, so coming up on the halfway point, and uh, again, looking forward to still the details yet to be ironed out and confirmed, but hoping in July during the actual transfer window that we can bring in all of those podcasts for a little bit of a round table, right? <laughs> Another <laughs> state yeah. of the Verde union, I guess, as it were, <laughs> um, and, and have some fun making some transfers and, and uh, you know, revamping our teams and, and talking about Austin FC as well um, a little bit on the side there. So let's get into the bets. Oh. I, I, Actually, it wasn't that bad this week. No. We, go, we go three and three. Um, and I guess the, the misses here first, Portland minus 110 at home against Minnesota. Not only did they not get the win, but they drop all three points at home to the 95th minute goal there by the Loons. So Portland does not come through for us. Dallas gives up the late goal after leading for most of that match to Houston. So we will take both teams dropping points there. Pretty but bad. We, yeah, we, we would have liked the bet as well. <laughs> um, and then Atlanta up a man for the majority of that match against Chicago, our Ujo screwing them with the red card of their own. They give up the late equalizer. So we were almost chalking up Atlanta plus 200 as a win. And then just <clears throat> ripped from our grasp. Um, so we did cash Austin minus 110, Philly minus 105 and Cincinnati minus 115, but that's minus 0.27 units on the week. So Negative 26.31 units on the season. Uh, you know, it's okay. It's okay. That's almost a break-even week. Yeah. And, uh, over the last two weeks, he's still up, technically. <laughs> We're playing golf, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So get ready to fade these week 15. <laughs> but I'll start us off this week. E. Uh, I'm going up to Seattle. Uh, rumor is that uh, Raul Rui Diaz on his way back may be going to be a bench appearance here, but Seattle, another team that is getting healthy and we're getting them at even odds right now, hosting New York Red Bulls coming across the country. Mm. Uh, and look, apparently anonymous team vote was unanimous in favor of bringing Dante Van Zier back into the fold. So in terms of the soccer the level of, of talent there, certainly elevated by their club record signing being put back into this team. They did uh, uh, drop their Open Cup uh, game at home against Cincinnati. 
midweek. Uh, so even odds for Seattle to, to get three points at home here, kind of get back on track themselves. Um, I like that. I'm going to lock that in as my first pick. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that Red Bull situation, especially with the climate of world football mm-hmm. soccer right now, it, I don't know how I feel about it. I understand it from a player perspective. Um, I understand that, unfortunately, a lot of those men have heard worse words sure. um, directed at them. But still, it, it not a great look. Just not a good look. But moving on. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've uh, we've gone to this well over and over this year, and it really hasn't been too great for us. But that's not going to stop me from diving in head first yet again when I'm getting the Philadelphia Union at plus 240. Heading into, uh, I don't know, the baseball park. What the fuck? The, wherever they're playing. Wherever they're can. playing. If there's a park somewhere in New York City <laughs> that's available. Um, but, yeah, 240. Uh, plus 240 for the union in, at uh, NYCFC. Um, lock that in. Yep. Just like the numbers there. Yeah, I mean, you, you trust the franchise, right? We, we will continue to ride with the union, uh, at least with our units. Not our fandom, of course. Uh <laughs> Let me get back on track here. I'm going, I can't believe I'm doing this, but uh, they're hot right now. And the team that's coming in is even worse. I'm looking at Montreal at home, minus 115, hosting Inter Miami, Inter Miami on an absolute horrid run of form lately. Uh, Looking at the table, uh, Miami sitting on 15 points. They had strung together a few wins after I think that six game losing streak were no draws, just six losses in a row. Uh, so a streaky team for sure have dropped two in a row here uh, in all competitions. So um, I like Montreal at home who has somewhat turned it around there um, getting healthier as well. Uh, minus 115 at home. I'll, I'll lock that in. All right. I like that for sure. Um, I am. I'm looking for the odds here. I'm at the wrong week. Um, I'm going back. You know, I don't know if people know this, but I'm an Austin FC fan. Oh, um, so I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put my units where my mouth is. Did they pull this line? No, I, I see it. Why am I not seeing it? Um, there we go. Uh, Austin in Houston, getting them at plus two twenty five. So again, we're taking some swings here with the with the units, hoping to you know somehow shift. <laughs> to the yeah. narrative for these bets. Uh, plus 225 Verde going into Houston. I think uh, that the um, the the question marks regarding Seba are baked into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, if, if there's an, a positive announcement and it looks good and you might get them on the team, that you could see this number change. So I want to get it now at plus 220, 225? Plus 225. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um... You know, especially with our, our Austin FC fandom. But I will point out, this is the reverse perfect bet. Yeah. No. <laughs> Gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, this is the edge of your seat uh, uh, bet here. But I like it. I mean, getting them, getting us at that number again, I I know I predicted a draw, but it's just – it's a winnable game. Houston is not good. Yeah. Maybe neither are we, but we'll, we'll see on Saturday. Um, third pick here, I'm, I'm going to the Loons, who – I am fully expecting Emmanuel Reynosa to debut against us on Wednesday. Um, But here on Saturday, they are hosting RSL anytime RSL or Colorado for that matter, come down out of the mountains, out of the elevation. Um, I usually like to pick on them so I can get Minnesota here at minus one Oh five at home. Allianz field, tough place to play. You know, they might attack you with that animatronic loon. And, you know, for that reason, I'm locking in Minnesota minus 105 hosting RSL. Nice. I like it. <laughs> um, so, you know, we just lost this game to the fire. So now it's, you know, we're they're not they're not on our good list right now. So we're gonna go ahead and take this New England Revolution team at home, minus 110. Um, got the update earlier from Coach Bruce. Carlos Heel potentially available. That's that's big news. That's big yeah. news right there. So um, obviously with my first two bets here, we're, we're really looking at the dogs. I'm going to go ahead and take a favorite here and get the revs at minus 110. Yeah. Yeah. 
those odds actually improved for you, I think, between when when we uh, picked out our bets earlier and and now. So we we like to see that. Indeed. Um, yeah, I mean, he's off the injury report, right? And I don't think we would be. I don't think you would be taking that bet if he was still on it. So yes. looking like he's going to give it a go. Um, also, Brandon By with the shoulder injury, I think he probably gives it a go as well. We'll see. New England minus one ten. Um, uh, let me throw in a fourth one here because uh, I'm I'm taking all of the uh, favorites so far here, the home team. So let me get a road team in here. Let me get some some plus units in plus two hundred right now for Vancouver visiting St. Louis. Um, and I guess just kind of putting my units where, where my mouth is here because I think St. Louis is not good. Um, very much overperforming their underlying numbers. And again, that's not everything. We know that. But mm-hmm. Vancouver, also a very solid side. work. They have just uh, gotten Sergio Cordova back into this rotation as well. Um, so being able to get them at, at two to one here going into St. Louis, tough environment for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is, is an experienced team that we just saw come into a tough Q2 environment and get a point last month. Um, so I, I like them to get a win here against St. Louis, a, a team that can certainly be a little bit reckless and have had overwhelming results, both of the positive and negative variety this season. So plus 200 Vancouver at St. Louis lock it in. Uh, and in addition to that, I've got Seattle, even money hosting Red Bull, Montreal minus 115 hosting Miami and Minnesota minus 105 hosting RSL E going with Philly plus 240 at NYCFC Austin plus 225 at Houston and New England minus 110 hosting the Chicago fire. Those are the week 15 betting picks. E anything else for you before we get out of here? Uh, Yeah. DC United plus 220. Oh, your boys. The fighting Roonies. The no, fighting Roonies. You inspired me with your with your got to put your units where your mouth is, and you know, okay. there's there was only one man who who touted the DC United fighting Roonies. It's true. It's true. And then, and, and not doing too bad either. So there. so they're going. I imagine this has to do with the dysfunction we've seen this week around Toronto and and the Bernadeschi comments after the Austin loss. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, that is that is a large part of it. Uh, also, I think DC United is solid. Um, it's big yes, East right now. Yes, Toronto uh, really down bad right now. And every time I've tried to pick on a team when they've been down bad, they've made me look stupid. So here's your <laughs> chance, Canadians. Yeah, Toronto fans rejoice. We have just <laughs> fixed your team. Um, <laughs> I almost picked the flyer so we could have really fucked them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, We appreciate you tuning in. Happy you joined us here on episode 58 of the North End Podcast. If you've got five seconds to rate, review, and subscribe to the pod, wherever you get your podcasts, we would greatly appreciate it. And of course, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button to help us grow the channel. You can hit the notification bell to know when a live stream pops up or a new episode goes live. And of course, on this episode, hit that thumbs up button, like the video, Help us battle the YouTube algorithm, overlords. Atone for your sins. Wash yourselves clean in uh, the rum of the North End. Of course, provided by the North End Pirates. We'll be (laughs) back. We'll be back on Sunday. (laughs) That was almost a little pirate laugh. (laughs) 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 We'll be back on Sunday. Recapping. Austin FC's match against Houston Dynamo. Austin FC 2's matchup against Dynamo Dos and previewing the midweek clash at Q2 Stadium against Minnesota United. We appreciate you being here. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you, or we won't see you this weekend, but safe travels to anybody going out there to Houston. Walk in pairs. Walk in pairs. That's all. We don't need to get into that. That's all I got to say. We'll see you guys back on Sunday. Until then, he's E. I'm Zach. Vamos Austin FC, everybody. Goodbye.